Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna work with a cymbidium orchid. If you're older on my channel, you know that I don't really grow cymbidium orchids. I've never had the space for them back in my old location and here I just don't have any type of luck with them. Now, in the past, in the balcony days, I actually had a cymbidium which even bloomed. So I'm not completely unaware of how to keep a cymbidium. I just didn't really figure out how to do that in this environment or I just had some bad luck with some bad individuals because I lost two, I think, three, no, three up until now. Plus I received a division which wasn't very healthy and I could not recuperate it. So it's like the zygopetalums, something just goes wrong. P.S. The zygopetalums, oh boy, they're doing so great. We're gonna see them at the end of the month. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna give these guys another go. I'm gonna test out a new medium today. And I saw this guy in the flower shop. This color is my favorite, favorite color on a cymbidium. Look at this lip. Oh, it's actually mobile. It's the first time that I'm noticing. Alrighty. So I picked him up because I loved the flowers. The sad news is it was the least healthy of all of them in the flower shop. And you can see that some flowers are already starting to fade, even though I have it for less than a week. And it's not a case of the orchid just being in bloom for a long time and the flowers fading. No, the buds are starting to yellow and fall as well. You can clearly see it here. I don't know how many will fall. Here we have another one, which is completely, completely yellow. So yeah, this orchid is not happy. It's not doing okay, even though I watered it. So let me show you how the orchid looks like. There he is, he's a big boy, and at a first glance, he might look okay, but check out what's happening with this new growth here. It's rotting and I absolutely need to remove the growth. Also, let's take a look at the roots or at the medium. First of all, we are seeing a lot of the roots. This shouldn't be because cymbidiums do not put out aerial roots. They won't start to grow them outside of the pot, just like a phalaenopsis. If roots start to grow in the air, they stop, they don't develop. Sometimes you can see some roots on top of the medium, but this is just not right. Medium is missing from here. The orchid is kind of coming out of its pot. Roots are way too exposed. Maybe they're getting dehydrated. I'm not entirely sure what's going on. The medium looks horrendous. It's horrendous and it does not smell good. And also look at this. The roots have algae on them. This means that they have been exposed like this for a while now. And it's not ideal for cymbidium orchids. And maybe in the nursery it was okay because, you know, the nursery controls humidity. Maybe it got watered every single day. I'm not sure. But in my environment, and by the way, I am keeping him on the terrace right now. He's a garden orchid. I cannot recreate the conditions of a greenhouse most certainly. So I decided that, you know what, I will repot him because the medium is awful. Theoretically, you shouldn't repot cymbidiums at this time of the year. Right now, they should be preparing to bloom. This guy has been induced into blooming, obviously, because they need a bit of a cool down to completely bloom or actually to initiate flower spikes, but this guy is completely bloomed out. So the spikes started to emerge maybe a couple of months ago, which was full summer. So yeah, the nursery probably induced blooming. So it is off season. If you consider the orchid, now it's the time to repot, yes, after it's done blooming. But if you consider the actual season outside, autumn, no, you should theoretically wait till springtime. But we have a suffering orchid in a very bad medium. So we will repot it today. I might cut away these two spikes and I might leave the ones that still have buds Maybe they will develop, I don't know. If all the flowers and buds fall, it's okay, incentive for next year. So with that said, I think it's time to unpot the orchid and see what's in the pot and how those roots look like. P.S. Yesterday I did my nails and today they're ruined. And this is because we found the perfect cage for the little bendies. It's a rather big cage and all morning I washed it and properly disinfected it and get it ready for the birds. Birds are happy, nails not so happy, but I'll do them later. So let's proceed with unpotting the orchid. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit on the pot. This orchid doesn't look like it's very attached to anything. It's just a little awkward to grab. Oh, but there we have it. I don't think all of the roots are bad, but I do feel a few that don't have any more substance to them. So these are not good. I 
think I still have good words, but look at that. There's barely any medium in this pot. So let's just go ahead and try to remove as much of the old medium as possible, which is, ooh, this does not look good. There are a lot of deposits or fungi. Not entirely sure, but it doesn't smell good and it does not look good. So this will take a while and I'll try to be careful with the root system. So I will speed up the process. And here we are. I actually went at the sink and rinsed the medium off. It was mainly peat moss, I think. Either cocoa peat, either peat moss. I think the latter, which is not bad for cymbidiums considering they can be terrestrial or semi-terrestrials at least. They don't enjoy a lot of drought in very, very big air pockets. They would much rather be moist. So it's not a bad thing to use peat moss or a combination of peat moss, it's okay. But that medium was extremely old and it had mushrooms and it smelled bad. And yeah, it really just needed replacing. I also saw some creepy crawlers, so I'm gonna put some hydrogen peroxide on these roots because I know cymbidiums, they usually come with bush snails. First of all though, I wanna see what's going on with this new growth. Actually, no what's going on, I just need to remove it. So as we can see, it is completely rotten all the way to the base. I can't get away with just cutting the leaves or the stem and maintaining the base, which can create new growth. Now we need to remove everything because look at this, it's all mush. And it's harder said than done, to be fully honest. So have here my pair of shears or actually fiskers, and I'm gonna try to cut the rhizome. Let's see if that did it. Nope. Cymbidiums have thick rhizomes. All right, I think this is good. There we have it. It even has a root, which is good, but it wouldn't have stayed alive anymore. And this root is not good anymore. So this is the growth, sadly, it rotted, it wasn't treated correctly, probably it was way too moist, but I think it's the only growth that I need to remove other than a few sheaths and leaves here and there, but that's okay. Other than that, I think the cymbidium actually looks good. And the root system is not in extremely bad shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove everything that I see has no more substance, is mushy, and is not needed on the plant anymore. And I'm done, I removed all of the dead roots that I saw. Not a whole lot, as you can see, but now I need to spray hydrogen peroxide. I'm gonna go to the sink and do that because, yeah, it's gonna be a shower of hydrogen peroxide. I wanted to remove that growth before this because I want to put hydrogen peroxide on the rhizome that I cut as well, just to eliminate any spores or bacteria or things. And as the orchid is fizzing away, you might hear it. Let's look at the pot that I will use and the medium. So first of all, cymbidiums usually come potted in these kind of tall cymbidium pots. If it wasn't obvious this is a cymbidium or a cymbidium pot, you have it written on the actual pot. So this is the standard pot they come in. Because this is a taller pot, it's harder to find something similar to replace it. And obviously I do need a bigger pot. The roots were pretty pot bound and now that I untangled them, I cannot get them back in that pot. So I got one which is a little taller and a little wider and it's just so pretty. I could not find anything transparent. So sadly, we're gonna have to use an opaque pot it is not self-watering, but it has this sort of improvised reservoir here, which looks like this. And it can actually hold a little bit of water in this dish and deliver it to the medium, provided the medium is absorbent. So that should help me out a little bit in the summer months. And the design, I just find it really, really pretty. There were other colors as well, but I wanted something light to reflect the sunlight and not overheat. And here's the brand. It is made in Italy, so if you like it, do Google the brand. It is the very first time that I see these pots around. So yeah, if you like them, I hope you can find them. And as for the medium, oh my goodness, I have this medium for a few months now. Ripakmi asked me, hey, do you wanna try out some cymbidium mix? Yes, cause I'm set on growing cymbidiums and I lost all of my cymbidiums. So I have this mix around for a while now. It is the Cymbidium Imperial Orchid Mix. And I do believe it's time to try it out. 
Looking on the product page, we see that it's made out of peat moss, professional grade, small orchiata, Monterey pine bark, chunky peat moss, turfus MVP. I always think of that meme when I read MVP, small sponge rock, perlite and small redwood bark. So it is a blend, it is a mixed design to be water retentive but also airy, which is great for cymbidiums and especially in this climate it should do okay. This is the first time that I'm actually using a specific cymbidium mix. Up until now I kind of mixed my own and we all saw how that went. <laughs> so theoretically I'm armed with good things. If I mess this up it's only on me. <laughs> Let's remove this tag. So as with every repotting, ooh, this mix is pretty soft. So I'm gonna put a layer of this mix on the bottom and then place my orchid inside and hopefully it's a deep enough pot, please be enough. I think it's okay, we're on the limit here, but it's okay. All of the roots are contained inside and the level is actually pretty good. It's where it used to be kinda, so we're good. And using this little scoop, I'm just going to continue adding medium. This medium is actually pretty easy to blend with the roots. Since the roots are so incredibly chunky, it would be hard to put moss in there and bark. But this mix, being that it is finer, actually goes in between the roots. If I tap a little bit, it's not going to retain way, way, way too large air pockets. So let's just do that until I fill up this entire pot. And here we are, my cymbidium is potted. My boyfriend always hates when I don't frame things correctly, but actually I just need to give myself a wider backdrop because big orchids simply don't fit in the frame. Anyway, one thing that I forgot with peat moss is that when it's dry, it's a little hard to rewet. And considering that this medium has been around for quite a lot of time, it was very dry. So I had to take my time and put a little bit of water, wait for it to be absorbed and so on and so forth until it got wet. Some people prefer to pre-wet peat moss, but even if I remembered this quality of peat moss, I still wouldn't have wet it because it was just so easy to make it fall in between the roots, tap it and it just went down. If it's wet, it's not gonna do that. So I personally prefer to take it easy, put a little bit of water, wait for it to be absorbed and so on, rather than having a hard time making the medium fall where I want it to fall. So that's a little side note for you guys if you ever work with peat moss. You have to consider whether you wanna pre-wet it or use it dry and then take your time wetting it. There are pros and cons with both strategies. Depends on what you want it to do. Now, here's the surprise. This pot and that little reservoir there actually holds on to more water than I thought. I'm going to tilt it just a little bit so you see what I mean and I will re-wet it afterwards. I mean, look at that. <laughs> and I already removed some of the water in the sink. So yeah, theoretically, it should give me a little edge in the summertime. In the wintertime, obviously I can tilt the pot and remove the water if I don't want it there, but in the summer, it's going to be great. Now I hope the medium actually has contact with this water. Being that this is not a true self-watering pot, but rather a tray attached to the pot that retains more water there. Overall though, I don't think we stressed the orchid way too much. I've been quite gentle on the root system. There weren't many roots dead. I didn't snap many roots. Being that it was peach moss, I just rinsed it under the faucet and it all just went away. So I didn't have to remove pieces of bark and remove the development together with them. I think it's gonna be okay. I don't guarantee that it will continue to bloom, but the orchid will not be set back. That's what I believe. I shall keep you up to date. Fingers crossed that this one will do good. The medium I find perfectly fine, finer or actually softer somehow that I imagined. Pretty fluffy, I think that's the word I'm looking for. I really liked how it behaved while I repotted it, but definitely if it's bone dry, it's gonna be a little harder to get it wet. All right, let's end this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. I will keep you up to date. You know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As and other fun orchid subjects. And if you wish to support the channel, do consider visiting the merch store down below. I'm off to spend some time with my little babies and also do my nails because it's shameful what I have on my nails. And with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye.